Hi folks, Bob Sorokonich here, Deputy Online Editor of Road & Track Magazine. With me is Mr. Bob Lutz, uh, the man behind uh, the end of book column that we run every month. And uh, Mr. Lutz, it's good to have you here. Good to be here. And uh, Thank you. we're standing in front of the Kia Stinger. Uh, this is the latest uh, debut from Kia. It was debuted here at the show today. And uh, we figured we'd have Mr. Lutz give us a little rundown of, uh, of what he sees on this car. Uh, there's no question about it from a standpoint of proportion, lines. Uh, this, I, I would say this could be German the way the German cars were five or ten years ago. Mm -hmm. And that, that doesn't demean the Germans. I think the Germans have, in, in some sense, in terms of... Um, proportion and surfacing have lost it a little bit mm -hmm. whereas this I think is a, a, an outstanding outstanding design workout I, I I like the wheels I like the red brake calipers uh, mm -hmm. adds a lot of you know sporting interest the hood vents are again not a new stylistic element um, we last saw those on the Saturn Sky. Mm -hmm. um, they do look very similar the way they punch straight out of the top yeah, of the hood yeah, like that. Sure, but that's you know you want you want some signals on a car like this to where uh, there is something demonstrably different from the average car on the on the road. So mm -hmm. I, you you have to add a bunch of stuff like that for visual interest. And I, I like I like the front end. We, we should probably go. Can we move? This yeah, let's take a let's, we'll take a walk around to the front end. Um, so it's interesting because uh, you mentioned some of the styling similarities with other automakers here. Um, I would imagine it's got to be tough after this many years to do something that's completely unique yeah, in it, design. It's, it's tough to do something completely unique, but on the other hand, uh, there's always refinement and different ways of handling the shapes. For instance, those lateral air intakes are not exactly new. We've seen them on, you know, several high-end sports cars, but they're, uh, and we've seen them rendered horrifically badly mm. on the Toyota Prius and uh, what's their fuel cell one? Oh, the uh, the Clarity. The Clarity. No, that's, no, that's the, Honda. That's Mirai. Honda. The Mirai. The, the Mirai, yeah. Where they're just, they look like inflated hamster cheeks. But <laughs> here, they're nicely done. They match the shape of the car. I do very much like the Kia grill that sort of extended, you know, dog bone, mm -hmm. um, I think is a, a very handsome grill shape, that, um, and it's one that they can evolve over time without giving it up. Mm -hmm. Interesting, there must be some sort of radar or distance warning device or camera here, because you see the grill is opaque here, mm -hmm. and it's designed to simulate the grill texture, but that's actually a piece of plastic, so I'm assuming there's a sensor behind there that wouldn't right. work through the grill. For radar cruise yeah, control or yeah. something along those lines. One unfortunate thing about Kia, and I don't know how to fix it, I think the badge is not attractive. The way the letters Kia are rendered, mm -hmm. not particularly attractive. The, the, the oval is kind of like the Ford oval, but it doesn't have it doesn't have the character. Mm -hmm. But hey, they can't do anything about that. Well, that was but, what I was going to ask you: is is you know automakers develop these logos and these typefaces, um, and it seems like you can't really change it for fear of uh, of coming up with something completely unrecognizable. Like like the Cadillac Cadillac abandoning the wreath and crest, mm -hmm. and just using that shield, which from 50 feet away looks like a Chevy bow tie. <laughs> so. That was wasn't a choice I would have made, but it, at um, any rate, yeah. And and I'm curious because it looks like most of this grill is actually opening. Um, I figured a lot of it would be blocked off for aerodynamic purposes, but it looks like well, if, all if of these air using, intakes. You know, if they're using turbocharged and intercooled, they need a lot of cooling air. Mm -hmm. So you probably want to let let a lot of air get in into the hood mm -hmm. on the car. The cooling is more important than aerodynamics. Mm -hmm. So, um, no matter how, how aerodynamic the car is, it doesn't go very far if the engine overheats. <laughs> so, you did a column recently for your um, for the Ask Bob uh, segment yeah. in Road and Track, where you talked about the Korean auto industry yeah. and how uh, the Korean automakers have have moved in. Well, it's basically one Korean automaker mm -hmm. called 
Hyundai Kia. Yeah, true. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little more about um, what you think they've done well and how you think they've gotten to the position that they're in. Well, I, I think what they've done very well is to understand the aesthetic and technical desires of the public. Mm -hmm. And um, and they used to not be design-focused. I mean, we remember earlier generations of Kia sedans and sport utilities, or even Hyundai for that matter, which were kind of lackluster looking, mm -hmm. mechanically fine, you know, got top ratings in JD Power for a number of defects, et cetera, et cetera, but mm -hmm. nobody bought them. And then with the transition to being a totally design-focused company to mm -hmm. where everything they do, and even even the Hyundai Veloster is unconventional, mm -hmm. but it's brilliantly done for right. what it is. The Kia Soul for a sort of boxy car, mm -hmm. I think is a, and it's the number one B-class car in America now, so it's hugely successful. Again, a, a great design. Their crossovers are all good, big, small, medium, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, Hyundai Kia has yet, and, and the, by the way, the big minivan, mm -hmm. of which you don't see very many, the, I guess it's the Kia Sedona, right. I think is the best looking minivan on the market. Really? Yeah, I, I just love the way that looks, proportion and everything. Uh, my view is probably not shared by the public because I haven't seen very many, but uh, I think it's good looking. Mm -hmm. And and so they they build a vehicle which is which are very close to world class in terms of ride and handling mm -hmm. and ride handling refinement, you know, perhaps not yet quite at the best German or American level, but certainly within the ninety five percent percentile band, which mm -hmm. is largely good enough. Uh, their interiors are beautiful, the workmanship on the cars is good. Reliability is excellent. I, th I think the Korean industry has done a dramatically good job, uh, especially, as I say, in marrying good mechanicals to good design. Mm -hmm. And they are kind of in a place, to me, w that the Japanese were in 15 or 20 years ago, where mm -hmm. kind of everything they did was good. Uh, and now you look at some of the Japanese brands and you look at the cars and you say, Tell yourself, I wonder what they were thinking, <laughs> and uh, um, and I, I think especially in terms of aesthetics, mm -hmm. um, with the possible exception of, of Nissan mm -hmm. um, I, and Mazda, but certainly Toyota and Honda are no longer style leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's take a look in the at the interior yeah. here, and if if you want to hop in and sure. uh, and take a look from the inside there. Um, because this is an interesting interior, um, I think it's it's uh, it seems to be a bit of a departure for for Kia. Well, I think I think it's it's kind of a departure for everybody because uh, it's an unconventional interior with this center bulge here, which most people try to minimize. And I imagine this screen possibly goes up and down. I don't I don't know, but at any rate, it's it's interesting looking. I like I like where these vents are. I like this arrangement. This is very it's, it's all very conveniently placed. Shifter and cup holders are nice. That's um, I mean it's new and different looking, and they're obviously all pretty high quality materials. The mm -hmm. the steering wheel is leather wrapped. This is all soft feel. Uh, this is soft feel. So they've obviously spent some money on the interior. Uh, there is absolutely nothing, nothing cheap about this car at all. And it has a, a, a rather European look to it, that <laughs> oh, with absolutely. the with the three yeah. dash vents and the the IP underneath the uh, um, you know yeah. the, the the controls there for well, climate they're, control. They're obviously it's it's very the whole car. Well, I mean the chief designer is former chief designer of Audi, mm -hmm. so it's it's not surprising that you find. Uh, elements of good German design in his work, mm -hmm. but you know I think this is a, a world-class car, highly competitive. Uh, I don't know where it's priced, um, and pricing is going to have a lot to do with it. I, I hope they don't sell it too cheap because um, a surprisingly low price might help sell cars, but it wouldn't do the brand any good. Mm -hmm. 
Well, um, so, so you know, speaking of the quality of the interior, um, how tough is that to to get to the right balance between uh, having cost effective materials and having high quality materials and high quality fit and finish? It's just a, a matter of of company priority. Um, Back in the old days before I got there, General Motors used to skimp on the interior. Everything was hard gray plastic because the interiors were designed down to a cost. Mm -hmm. And uh, they said, well, our interiors are fine. We don't have many complaints on J.D. Power. Well, absence of things gone wrong is not is not the same as presence of excellence. Mm -hmm. And what, what a lot of car companies forget is once they've bought the car, people spend all their time in the interior right and you can either have an interior where every time you get in you tell yourself why the hell did i buy this cheap thing or you get in and every time you look at it you're rewarded as to what a good decision you made mm -hmm. because look at all this great stuff that i bought and that is worth a couple of hundred that easily that customer satisfaction lifelong customer satisfaction is easily worth uh, the two or three hundred dollars that differentiate a Spartan interior from a world-class interior. That's mm -hmm. all it is. It's two or three hundred bucks, and you can get away with shaving in areas that people don't see. For instance, on the insides of leather seats, mm -hmm. the inside facings, you don't need genuine leather. You can put vinyl there and so forth. So there's areas where you can take a little cost away without hurting the customer and the smart interior designers know how to do that they they know how to put the cost where the customer could see it things I, I would say this is a very well designed interior the the only thing I don't like see they've got authentic materials this looks like real um, satin finish aluminum so does this so do the bezels here and so does this door handle mm -hmm. or the grab handle but then when you get to the door handle itself it looks like aluminum spray paint right and uh it's somehow that's a jarring element it's not the same texture or surface as all of the other aluminum accents in the car mm -hmm. but you know you can always find fault i think overall this is a very impressive automobile let's uh keep schrader on the other side mm -hmm. oh so let's so, um he wants let's, to talk to you Let's hop out, and um, Peter Schrager is going to join us. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, that's, that's a privilege. It is. Um, and this will give us a chance to sort of take a look at the rear of the car, too. Mr. Lutz. Lutz. Thank you. I am a ständig bewunderer of his designs. I respect you very much. Und äh, ich, ich war sehr stolz, als sie ähm, über mich geschrieben haben, ich sollte mehr Geld verdienen. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody has offered me so far. So. <laughs> But das, 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 that, that, that didn't surprise me, because, you know, the, the default at, at General Motors is always to pro yeah. promote from the inside. But yeah. when I see what you've done for Hyundai and Kia, uh, it's just an amazing transformation. And yeah, thank you. I also would give the most senior management some credit because they're obviously listening to you. Yeah. They, they, they want, they, yeah. they, they try, yeah. but they're very daring. You know, so, we're going to wrap it up there. We're going to let these two old colleagues uh, reminisce. Um, thanks for joining us here for, live from the uh, Detroit Auto Show. Um, and come back to Road & Track tomorrow and you'll see more live coverage from the 2017 Detroit Auto Show. Thanks, guys.